Доброго дня. Good afternoon. Dear participants of today's event, dear guests, dear audience. So we are 10 minutes late, but now we have all honorable speakers with us. And also through Zoom, we have our colleagues from UCMC. I will introduce everyone in turn. And uh, today is the seventh anniversary of uh, Ukraine Crisis Media Center. That's why we invited not officials or deputies. If you see a deputy or official, it doesn't mean that they got this invitation because of their position. If we are speaking about Ivana Klimpersensaza, she, she is a co-founder, as well as Natalia Popovich and uh, Gennady Kurachka, all those who believed in the idea in uh, 20. 14, Danila Pivsky and Pavlo Sheremet. This idea was in the air at the time, and I'm really glad that in my office at that time on Sunday, a big team got united, PR campaigners, diplomats. I would like to remind about Geni Bestritsky from Renaissance Foundation who helped us and starting 10 p.m. until Wednesday 5th, uh, uh, this um, March, we got everything. We created the full-fledged media center and the first event was on the 5th of March, and Natalka uh, Popovich mentioned it on Facebook that uh, there was a call concerning Crimea because quick response was needed. We had 27 cameras together with American, uh, European, world channels. So we created a platform really quickly in order to bring truth to the world about what is going on in Crimea and in Ukraine on the whole and about the pressure on Ukraine. And one of the working names that was proposed to Ukraine under attack, it was first called. This name appeared for us too tough, but now I believe that it is not too tough if we take into account Russian aggression that happened later on. And uh, then Ukraine Crisis Media Center, and uh, we didn't hope that this would take long. And uh, now maybe the name should be changed. But uh, unfortunately, crises in the world and in Ukraine continue. And there should be people who respond to crises. And we should deal with them. And we should do this together. Today, during pandemic times, of course, we wanted to have celebrations. And we will do this together with our uh, multi uh, team that was created during these seven years. Many people went through UCMC. Now they take offices, they work in business and politics. And I'm really grateful to everyone. I cannot mention everyone who from the start started to bring this truth about Ukraine to the world and counteracting Russian disinformation. Several tons of people we may mention, they contributed really a lot during these seven years. They contributed not only to this work, but also to the history of UCMC. And I would like to thank the team that is working now. And also the founders, the members, the heads of our directions. Not everyone will take the floor, but uh, you understand that other People really contribute to this important work. I would like to say right at once that Yulia Shmigalova, director of UCMC, and Irina Malik, Dobra program, and Tatiana Kolasa, media rebuilt, and press center, uh, Marta Bilas, and she celebrates her uh, um, birthday today. And Victoria Zabian also contributes to our cause. And we will have the 
directions heads who deal with this topic. Uh, today's topic is about uh, perception of Ukraine in the world, about what happened during these seven years, what changes were made, and uh, the name of the stop um, press conference is International Image of Ukraine and what changed during these seven years. And I remember the big uh, work concerning analysis of the situation based on the initiative of Yulia Mastava. It was in the air in 2000. And I am happy that I'm ahead of this project. And the first analysis of the world situation has shown that Ukraine is perceived through sportsmen and also due to Shevchenko, Klitschko brothers. And also, this is a post-Soviet nation. It is difficult to differentiate it from Russia. This was the picture. After 2014, the situation has changed, and Ukraine that uh, got its uh, sovereignty due to people who proved that they are ready to die for the values. And the, uh, now people perceive Ukraine differently due to this. And I believe that uh, some narratives return. and. Uh, we believe that in 2014 that Ukraine started to be called the country of heroic people, a country that uh, really fights for the values uh, that is at the front line that counteracts uh, nuclear Russia. And this image was upheld for several years. And now on the pages of uh, the foreign press, you may find more materials where there is wet corruption, a low efficiency of state administration. And there are basic reasons for this, but this should not become a narrative. And Russia works in this direction seriously. They attack us through information channels. They say that this state should not exist at all. So this is a foreign Western project. And the last declarations by Russian officials that Ukraine is mentioned in commas. And it shows that these attacks will continue. At that, we have a task, joint task to prevent these events, and this is not only the task of the power, this is the task for the whole society, for NGOs, and many organizations got united in this area. That's why I would like to start at this, and maybe you will speak about some aspects. You should not uh, uh, speak about the overall picture, but to, to identify aspects where we Ah, it is important, but what should we do? What should we do in order to promote the image of Ukraine to allow us to implement our national interests? I would like to give the floor to Vitaly Portnikov, not only because he always provides in-depth picture and he deals with uh, this really professionally, not only as a journalist who is really well known as a publicist, and, and he is capable of speaking about difficult things simply. And also he may provide some motivation for us to speak about some topics. Maybe I should leave after the speech. Because provocateurs, they do this like this. And what should I focus on? You have a huge, you have huge experience. Uh, and uh, tell us, please, about uh, the stages of perception of Ukraine. How would you divide these periods? What should we do in the next stage? How should we position our country? Maybe several words, several sentences of this. What should we say about Ukraine to the world? At the start of our discussion, I would like to bring an example of my professional life. In 2004, I 
was invited by uh, Carnegie Moscow Center for public discussion concerning those events that were ongoing in Ukraine, the Orange Revolution, and uh, what could happen in the result if protesters win, and how to overcome the crisis when it came. And I said close to the anchor, and he said that our guest today is Ukrainian publicist Vitaly Portnikov, and I was really surprised. And I said, what happened? Why do you present me like this? I worked in Moscow starting 1999, and they called me Russian publicist. And I said, sorry, but I'm a I am accredited at your Minister of Foreign Affairs. Why do you call me Ukrainian journalist? And they said, oh, uh, don't pretend what it's all about. And without me asking uh, for the first time in many years, I was called Ukrainian journalist here. And uh, they uh, called me like this uh, always. And my uh, Russian essence uh, went away with the Orange Revolution, and this is the answer to all questions. Ukraine, Ukraine appears in people's conscience when it starts to be subject of perception, and we start to be independent in the world when we are capable of dealing with our own fate, when if we are object of influence, no one pays attention to us. And I've mentioned it to my Polish friends who, who for many years reminded that Poland for a long time was an advocate of Ukraine, that uh, um, after 2014, Ukraine doesn't need advocacy, uh, it needs support. 2014, before this, we needed uh, Polish or any other com country campaigning because we are not, we were not political subject. We were not able, uh, we were not capable of dealing with civilization uh, issues, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, needed advice from Kremlin before. And uh, now we should convince the world that we have the right to make our own choice, and then why we have this right. We should explain this. Ukrainian civilization in the conscience of many people, common people who live in the world, it is replaced by idea that we are continuation of the Russian Empire. And many compatriots they continue to speak Russian abroad, and they support Russian narratives, not only political, but civilizational. That's why uh, it is difficult for people uh, to perceive uh, Ukraine, because they see this conflict be between Russia and Ukraine, and they perceive it as a civil conflict. For example, if such a conflict would be between uh, Germany and uh, Austria, this is not civilizational conflict. This is the conflict between two uh, German-speaking nations, and they should agree among themselves. That's why the world uh, looked at this Anschluss, um, because they couldn't understand what will happen in the future, and many people in Austria, they wanted to get united with uh, Germany. And this is an important idea. We should consider ourselves as independent civilization because this is needed in order to get support from abroad. And uh, we should identify what this image of Ukraine should be. One important aspect. Uh, what is not understandable to our friends is clearly uh, understandable to our enemies. I told you the story about 2004 and uh, in 1991, I uh, was uh, asked to leave the press conference 
that Mr. Zatulin and Mr. Adrian were pro, um, give, uh, giving because they said that here we have a Ukrainian journalist and we have a press conference for Russian journalists. They knew that Ukraine exists and uh, that it should be destroyed. And they, uh, these people, they contributed to this. And for us, it is really important that uh, our friends, they should understand that we are independent. We have our own identity. Maybe this time has come that we have our identity after country went to Maidan and after war. And what is the difference? Uh, and the uh, Ukrainian people told about this. We shouldn't focus on this. And this tonality of conversation with the world, this is like conversation with the autonomous, uh, rebellious, autonomous republic of Russia. Uh, when the president shifts to the language of another nation, demonstratively, uh, for example, they say, we will speak among themselves in Kriveryuk, in Kharkiv, uh, we will speak the language we speak with Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. So maybe Zelensky changed his views. Maybe they are not like when he only started his political activity. But we understand that Vladimir um, uh, Putin and Vladimir Zelensky are people of one civilization. Uh, you cannot pretend that this is not the case. If uh, uh, Ukrainians elect for people um, who confirm that Ukraine is a project. How can we say the opposite then? So this is the fact that happened in 2019. Until Zelensky is a president, um, Ukraine as a state will be on pause. It will exist only as a project that may be completed or may not be completed. And this depends on how our people vote. So I believe that uh, we have enough of provocations for today. Maybe we may say, what should our society do? I say only one simple thing. If we can propagate the values of Ukrainian civilization, I do not speak about primate of the language, cultural, civilizational values and respect to uh, values and democracy, historic values, that Ukraine is not a part of Russian civilization, that it is the civilization in itself and uh, it is not under Moscow. If we are not able to bring this idea to the whole territory of Ukraine, we won't be able to um, get proper help from abroad to preserve our um, territorial integrity. Society should do everything possible in order to become Ukraine throughout its territory. Now we pass the test whether we are capable of preserving ourselves in the borders of a Soviet Socialist Republic. So part of our territory is controlled by another state. And this is the main um, for society to preserve the territory uh, on which independence was proclaimed in 1991, because in the next 10 years, we may appear in the territories that were controlled by Ukrainian People's Republic uh, in the previous uh, centuries. Uh, so, um, uh, thank you. Now we are going to be more laconic, more brief. We heard the main opinion that in order to show something to the world, we should first understand the situation inside the country. There are tasks that need explanation. Uh, 
position of Ukraine concerning our wish to join NATO, European Union, concerning Euro integration. And Ivana Klimpush Sensadze, she knows a lot about this. She was, she was a, a, a vice premier and the head of the committee now uh, on Euro integration. Ivana, I would like uh, to ask you and to remember the positive aspects of lobbying, active lobbying in Europe concerning association agreement and uh, what lessons we have learned and uh, your personal experience. And uh, you worked on American radio in America, we may say. You uh, been uh, uh, in the Ukrainian radio, in uh, uh, in American radio, in the UK, you try to, to explain to the broad public some basics. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm very happy uh, because of this meeting, because unfortunately, due pandemic restrictions, we can not uh, celebrate widely, but we can commemorate partially, virtually, partially, uh, modestly in uh, partial presence, the uh, anniversary of the um, UCMC establishment and uh, 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 for, uh, some six, seven uh, years ago during the association agreement signing, oh, we expected that uh, the work would be over within several, would be over within several months, but immediately uh, uh, have started the implementation. We understood that it would take longer and now seven years up on signing of the association agreement, we believe that this uh, public awareness work is extremely important. I fully agree with uh, um, uh, with you that uh, uh, keeping Ukraine in focus uh, of uh, of the uh, broad world uh, depends very much on ourselves. When uh, PR experts uh, keep asking me how to um, become uh, seen in the world, um, I uh, uh, I understand that in order to be to show yourself, you need to sh demonstrate some content behind and the appearance and uh, uh, back in uh uh, 2014, when the biggest uh, uh, challenges for Ukraine had appeared, at the same time we um, understood that, that Ukraine had uh, become interesting to um, other countries, which uh, had its values, which uh, had to uh, to leave these values and. Um, uh, uh, between the years 2014-2019, I should confess that uh, we many times uh, um, felt the um, uh, ethic uh, prevalence, the um, the ethic advantage of knowing where do we go, what marathon distance we have to cover to get to the point which we want to reach. During the last two years, unfortunately, we had to some extent uh, lost that uh, mm, uh, a target in front of us uh, and uh, lost uh, that uh, deep content, uh, the deep value behind our lives. And uh, I believe that we had to revive it uh, to represent our country uh, uh, abroad with dignity. Valerie, you mentioned the merge, uh, the close union between the civil society, between those people 
who um, uh, uh, between those who uh, have a good, more opportunity to represent their artistic product here in Ukraine and uh, to make this uh, um, uh, product more known, artistic product, creative product more known abroad. This will tell our Ukrainian story and uh, this will tell the story of our contemporary development of, of our deep historic heritage. Uh, all of course, uh, we all uh, work uh, in uh, the environment, which not obligatory is quite friendly, which not obligatory is quite supportive, which not always is supportive to us, and. Uh, um, uh, not always uh, we have sufficient resources. We have to keep in mind that for years and years uh, we will exist in the same environment, international environment with the Russian Federation, which has huge resources, which has uh, uh, corruption uh, uh, resources, which has uh, uh, very uh, uh, many negative uh, 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 things inside it, but uh, uh, unfortunately, they may be very successful in uh, their counteraction to you to the promotion, international promotion of Ukraine, because uh, they are uh, unfortunately um, uh, 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 assisted uh, uh, intentionally or unintentionally by some forces inside the Ukraine. And telling the truth about Ukraine should be our focus for many, many years ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I've heard this statement about union, about uh, uh, coherent action between the public authorities and uh, the civil society. I recollect the years 2015-2016 when, uh, when uh, government officials were very active participants of the UCMC um, events quite often and quite recently we had revived that tradition, that very good tradition. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, recently, uh, some government officials, officials started to appear here in Ukraine. Quite uh, recently, in the uh, uh, presidential administration, when Petro Poroshenko was there, uh, um, we uh, made much. Uh, uh, for this cohesion between uh, the government and uh, civil society. And at the same time, we, uh, we have got some successes in promotion um, uh, of uh, Ukrainian values uh, at many levels. Uh, at that time, we had a joint program uh, uh, in which I, I personally was involved. I was a chairman of that uh, um, program. Uh, Natalia Popova, Nadia Kurochka, they uh, um, uh, directly uh, cooperated uh, from civil society with the uh, uh, presidential office at that time. And uh, uh, you may recollect uh, several exhibitions which were held, uh, publicly held and opened for broad public in the premises of the presidential administration. Uh, 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 and all those uh, poppies uh, and uh, 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 open space for broad public. I believe that those initiatives uh, are worth to be revived. By the way, that program uh, and exhibitions which were made without any mm, support, uh, without any external funding, but unfortunately, 
uh, but unfortunately it had died. Uh, it had died at the moment uh, uh, when it was taken to the Ministry of Economy of Ukraine and aimed at uh, the support of Ukrainian businesses. By the way, Ukrainian businesses had its own money for promotion a promotion of themselves and uh, they did not require any any state effort uh, for, for in, in that direction direction. Um, so uh, we believe that we need to, to establish a structure, uh, governmental perhaps structure, which might deal with that. Um, quite recently, the president of the uh, American Chamber of Commerce uh, suggested to create such a thing as uh, the Ukrainian Institute. And these days, uh, we witness a situation when we have Ukrainian Institute uh, uh, and now, what do you plan uh, to do now? Uh, uh, and how do you plan to involve Ukrainian uh, stakeholders? I uh, I beg your pardon, but I would like to interfere uh, uh, at our table. Today we have a person who was uh, directly involved in the um, establishment of the Ukrainian Institute. This is Mr. Danilo Lopkevsky. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, um, I, I just wanted to revive the um, justice, the historical justice, so to say. Thank you so much for this invitation. And uh, uh, the question, what the Ukrainian Institute plans to do, this is uh, uh, a bit abstract uh, level of discussion, but it is uh, very much required uh, because uh, uh, there are many factors uh, upon which the uh, activities of Ukrainian Institute uh, depends. Uh, today I would like more discuss the paradigm in which we would like to operate. Uh, in general, I'm happy that today around the table I've heard about the subjectivity of uh, Ukraine Ukrainian uh, uh, state, uh, 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 because it's uh, actually part of our mission, strengthening the subjectivity of Ukraine as a state uh, among the international community. And um, uh, for me, uh, I'm very happy that there is already consensus in place that our aim is not just to improve the image of Ukraine abroad, but uh, that that uh, there is a definite uh, strong focus for us strengthening the subjectivity of U state subjectivity of Ukraine. Uh, by the way, it's not possible to um, promote subjectivity of Ukraine if we do not have such strong subjectivity inside the country. And uh, um, uh oh yeah, although although all our um, uh, civil society or many our civil society uh, organizations do not speak one voice but uh, and it's not always needed but uh, mm, mm, speaking for abroad we should speak in one voice and we have to find a social consensus around the most important issues for example in Ukraine we have reached the social consensus about the Holodomor topic, the great famine, but we do not have social consensus about the Holodomor uh, the theme, about uh, the um, attitude towards some aspects of human rights, about religious, uh, um, as some religious aspects, etc. So we we feel all those nuances in our everyday work. When we come to the civil society, at large, the majority of partners of the Ukrainian institute 
institute. These are not the institutions of power. These are um, civil society organizations or alternatively artistic organizations or individual artists even. Because these are the centers where the senses um, appear and where they grow up. Um, in our institute last year we had held um, uh, the um, survey about perception of Ukraine in seven countries. And we tried uh, to understand the opinion uh, of expert community. Uh, how do they see the biggest uh, problems uh, uh, in the image of Ukraine? And uh, um, we wanted to make a baseline, baseline where we are now and uh, from about the starting point from which we start to move forward. Um, we had registered uh, uh, um, either um, uh, neutral or uh, um, uh, sympathetic neutral um, attitude and uh, uh, but uh, this was very superficial uh, attitude and perception and uh, they do not have uh, what is uh, uh, it, what can be attributed to Ukraine, progressive, creative, uh, uh, entrepreneurial, etc. That is what we want to, to imagine about ourselves, but uh, these are not unique characteristics which could be applied to Ukraine uh, from all around the world. We have, uh, we have uh, discovered that the major figures of our national pantheon, so to say, are mostly unknown uh, abroad. Neither Lesa Ukrainka nor Shevchenka as poets, uh, poets are known. Um, of course, uh, Borscht uh, embroidered uh, uh, T-shirt, uh, um, uh, Saint Sophia Cathedral. These are the things which are most known abroad, but all the rest, um, our treasures, remains unknown. If you want to make a big impression on the foreign uh, audience, we need to develop some uh, um, senses and some uh, markers. Now, after thousands of colonial culture, Ukrainian has got a chance to show itself in the international arena. Mm. Uh, we still remain uh, within the uh, pro-Soviet uh, uh, or pro-Russian perception. I found that in Japan, in, uh, uh, for example, in uh, Western Europe, uh, we are still perceived as part of Russia, and uh, uh, pro-Russian narratives uh, are not only uh, come from not political um, uh, uh, field, not from mass media, but also from the academics, from educational systems, from uh, foreign experts. Uh, this is what is highly rooted in their um, uh, mentality, and uh, this should be the main target for our purposeful uh, uh, work, um, uh, feasible work. Uh, that is, uh, um, uh, we have to work intentionally. I could continue. Uh, uh, I could continue. I would like to refer to Ms. Viviane Walker, who, who is a big expert and uh, on our uh, forum of cultural uh, diplomacy, she pointed out uh, what is the main point for Russian attacks in Ukraine, your language, your history, your identity. What does this mean? This means that uh, these are the most dangerous uh, uh, items for Russia. This is how you may counteract the uh, uh, Russian uh, narrative and Russian 
impact. Thank you for setting this task uh, for us. We expect that this uh, will be um, a proper response from the government. This is really important. And uh, also, there is uh, parliamentary diplomacy, not only cultural diplomacy. And we thank uh, Ivana Klimpush since and to please share information with our foreign colleagues that we really hope for their solidarity. There is not only cultural diplomacy, but also overall diplomacy that forms many ideas. And we heard about many ideas concerning Ukrainian Institute, as I remember. This idea emerged inside the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and then in grew. And everything that was born in such institutions rarely implemented. This is a rare case that was implemented in a good way. I would like to give the floor to uh, Daniel Pkivsky. And uh, I would like to ask him about the markers concerning overall diplomacy. As a director of a Kiev Security Forum, uh, you worked with Arseniy Tsinyuk, uh, and uh, this is a very uh, top-level forum. I participated in um, different forums, and I believe, uh, for example, in Munich forum, and I see that your forum is really of top level. And is your diplomacy of cultural character whether we may help diplomatically in this area? And uh, what about our geopolitical role? Maybe this is a market that we are a heroic nation that protects European values. So what Vladimir mentioned added to the issue concerning identity, this is the key issue. And what every ambassador of Ukraine abroad provides during the meeting? For example, they may say that my country. And well, Lady, thank you very much. I hope it works. Uh, thank you for the good question. But before answering your question, I would make a short introduction. Uh, I, I would like to make uh, uh, my introduction and uh, thank you to Vladimir Sheiko and the, to the Ukrainian Institute, uh, which was established back in 2016 when our team was in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, I am now so happy that so many people continue this initiative. I would like to emphasize that the Ukrainian Institute has a privilege and, and the advantage of having a very talented leader and uh, that uh, they have a very talented and creative team. Um, Saying this, I am addressing to my colleagues in diplomatic corps of Ukraine, and I encourage them to take the Ukrainian Institute uh, seriously as a good assistance to their work. Um, and Valery, I am happy that you mentioned about financial support of the Ukrainian Institute. As of now, it is quite modest support, and uh, this is uh, not right. And uh, uh, in order for the Institute to carry out its tasks fully, we have to find resources for it within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, because this is a very important institution. Having made this introduction, I would like to say that uh, I have very sensitive attitude towards UCMC. I would like to thank the Valeri Charlie, to Ivani Klimpurs and Sadze, to Natalia Popovich and to uh, Henadia Korochka, who invented uh, this um, 
structure and implemented it when uh, uh, you came to us with your initiative, with the idea of your initiative, we immediately felt that it was our um, as, uh, uh, our obligation to support you. Back in 2014, you see, MC was like a continued voice uh, of Maidan, um, like embodied voice on Maidan, but but on the second uh, side, but on the opposite side, it was a portal. It was a platform, um, uh, and the UCMC played a huge role in defense uh, um, of our country and in promotion of the national interests of Ukraine. Back in 2014, we found ourselves in the midst of several processes. Uh, 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 there was the war range uh, raged around us. There was uh, the uh, need uh, to survive uh, um, and uh, 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 and there was a huge crash, huge collapse of the um, uh, entire epoch and uh, uh, at the global level, at the European level and at Ukrainian level. And uh, um, uh, there was one more um, uh, change, the change of generations. Yesterday was said a last farewell to the first minister of the foreign affairs and independent Ukraine to Mr. Zlenko. And uh, um, uh, in 2014, we found ourselves at uh, 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 at the um, driving uh, driving wheel, and uh, um, uh, today we have to thank to all those who had been defending Ukraine for the last seven years. Of course, for in first turn, we have to thank to our armed forces, to our soldiers and mili uh, military servants, and also to diplomats, uh, to civil society, to volunteers, uh, to all those who contributed to that defense. Uh, we have found the way out. We have found the alternative in that uh, tough situation. Uh, this is my message to those who look with a huge pessimism uh, on our way forward. Uh, by the way, due to that fact, Ukraine became visible in the world. Of course, you may try to diminish that uh, things today. You Pre, uh, you try to pretend that Ukraine is, uh, remains unnoticeable in the world, but I believe that Ukraine has been recognized in the world, has been identified in its independence and sovereignty, uh, and has taken its place. And uh, um, Another good uh, uh, positive aspect, uh, uh, the attitude towards collective defense. Uh, yesterday, Mr. McFall, the, um, bus, uh, 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 the collective Western uh, society. Uh, he mentioned that there, there is no collective Western society, unified Western society, but there is a conflict between the neoliberals, etc., with different groups in society, but uh, you appeal to the uh, collective Western society, but uh, there is no such thing um, in reality. But uh, um, nevertheless, the West uh, has changed its attitude towards Ukraine. Mr. Chairman, if you allow me, I would like to make an announcement now about uh, a, a, an important event 
On March 10th, the Ukrainian Security Forum would present the joint initiative uh, between the Ukraine uh, uh, between Ukraine and the United States. 12 steps towards strengthening collective security. This will be a joint effort of the Lviv Security uh, uh, Forum, Kiev Security Forum, UCMC, and dozens of our partners in the United States and in Ukraine. We have uh, produced that initiative in order to fill in that uh, emptiness, that uh, black hole, which uh, um, appeared, uh, um, that pause, uh, which appeared uh, in the relations between the official Washington and the Kiev, despite the fact that uh, there were two telephone talks between the heads of the state. So this will be Ukrainian politicians, diplomats, and some um, American experts offer 12 joint items of the joint agenda. And there is one key item in that agenda. Uh, uh, Ukraine's membership in NATO will strengthen uh, the Northern Atlantic Alliance, will uh, uh, promote the U unification of Europe and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, contribute to the joint development. So there is a very important nuance uh, that uh, by now the uh, uh, membership in NATO, Ukraine's membership in NATO was seen as an assumption. Now uh, uh, this had become a reality. Ukraine uh, had become actually the part of Euro-Atlantic spa space both in economic, in the security, and in political dimensions in future. Of course, um, uh, there are some difficulties. Um, we uh, often criticize the current uh, uh, ruling uh, um, authorities, but I, sh uh, I uh, would not put all the blames on these uh, uh, people. But there are th some things which are not done and should be done. Um, uh, uh, that is, we still lack the uh, full-fledged uh, uh, systemic, coherent uh, uh, public policies in, for example, media sphere or in uh, my sphere, diplomacy. That is, uh, we have the issues with the formulation of systemic state policies and uh, 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 a big problem with the oligarchs and uh, uh, in uh, restricting of oligarchs, bringing them into limits, setting good rules, uh, plain rules of the game for small, medium, large businesses, for foreign investors in Ukraine, or the problem with the property right protection and uh, the priority of security in Ukraine and the priority of uh, defending life in Ukraine. Uh, the organizers of that event as had asked us uh, wh what story we want to tell by our event. Actually, this is the story of our life. This is tough life. This is a uh, uh, hard life. Uh, our Ukraine is not simple, is not easy. Uh, when we try to speak about Ukraine as a uh, front line uh, is a frontier territories. Uh, this immediately puts the, us into difficult situation. The frontiers uh, never are st uh, um, uh, stable. They could be transformed any moment. This is a transformating matter 
and uh, here much would depend depend on our ability to bring things under control and we may may decide either to have a frontier line here on this territory or to make a safe space but for reaching this we need to have a strong governmental authorities good civil society and such institutions as the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center, uh, um, which uh, uh, upon uh, passage of all the crises would become the center for hobbies and leisures. Uh, Your Excellency, I understood that you would finish with those words, and I, that's why I did not interrupt you. We're not clubhouse unfortunately we have the um, uh, direct stream uh, thank you for extending our horizons um, and uh, when it comes to the um, you see future you seem see perspective I would like to give the floor to Miss Natalia Popovich uh, you mentioned Maidan. Uh, the first um, location of the center was uh, in direct uh, vicinity of uh, Maidan, and this was uh, the self-defense of Maidan, which defended the access to the first press center, press room of the Ukrainian crisis media, uh, Ukrainian crisis media center. At that time, we had made this decision not to be located in the remote area in the um, uh, 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 administrative center, uh, governmental center in Kiev, but uh, uh, almost on the Maidan itself. Uh, later on, we were hosted by the Ukrainian uh, house, uh, and uh, this also again reflects our uh, goals. Um, Natalka, I would like to to ask you to uh, describe uh, your uh, our everyday work at that time and the next my request to you is uh, to uh, review your uh, uh, work as a chairperson of UCMC here when I left for the United States and at that time together with the Nadia Korachka, you created uh, many pieces of information, many initiatives about interesting figures representing Ukraine. And uh, having got that uh, pieces of information, uh, uh, that collection of information, it was uh, very much easy for me to present that to our partners abroad. Uh, uh, how could we now promote perception of Ukraine in the world? Uh, thank you so much uh, for this introduction. Uh, it's very good that we have this reflection about March 5th, uh, seven years ago, when uh, uh, mm, the... Mm, work of UCMC started uh, uh, in early March 2014. I had very many, um, I had many romantic ideas uh, and uh, when Ivan uh, and uh, uh, myself we met with Andri Deshitsa with uh, Mr. Danilo Lubkivsky and had discussions whether it uh, should be um, uh, civil uh, society center or the public center. Mm, uh, uh, I looked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, looked at it and had a naive uh, perception that uh, mm, uh, all the government agencies should be brought there all together. And uh, unfortunately, it did not happen like that. From the first, but from the very first day on March fifth, uh, uh, twenty fourteen, then every. Um, 
uh, every year uh, I recollect uh, how uh, uh, Utkin uh, came, showed his Russian passport and uh, had said that uh, uh, there is no need to defend uh, uh, me here uh, um, and these were days when we wanted to say that Ukraine is a country where a person has a value that each man, woman, or a child uh, a value that the dignity and freedom of each person really values. I believe that this is a civilizational unity which should remain uh, the biggest value for us in the uh, future. In our further projects, we spoke that Ukraine is the country that didn't appear in 1991, the country that has its language, its history, identity, that we started to reveal inside and uh, outside the country through uh, cultural diplomacy and language and culture is uh, well integrated and uh, we uh, want to continue these projects and scale them up because the projects that we've implemented in the United Nations uh, with outreach to the heads of the states, United Hundred, uh, the countries that supported sanctions against Russia and uh, warned the world about the aggression. Uh, so we raised such topics as the revolution of dignity. We provided a lot of information materials in different la languages about Euromaidan, uh, stolen peninsula, um, stolen uh, Crimea to visualize how it looks for us. Ukrainian um, big names and the reforms of state communications we implemented it due to our American partners with the presidential administration and several other Ukrainian institutions, Ukrainian big names. This was the first um, exhibition and a number of books. Uh, this was an important instrument for Ukrainian diplomats. They were able to show them to speak about uh, globally integrated Ukrainians. And then we had Ukrainian innovations to speak about those people who were inspired by Ukraine, who lived here in different places. They could be ethnical Ukrainians or not, and they provided their legacy for the world. And uh, this was a big project of Ukrainian innovations and Ukrainian avant-garde. Dimitriko mentioned that uh, this should be uh, closed for Ukrainians. It is difficult otherwise to explain it to others. Together with the Ukrainian Institute, we carried out a survey, and we understood that uh, Ukrainians do not uh, know Ukrainian avant-garde and uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, short renaissance, and uh, we should uh, promote our identity that uh, should be uh, to fight any uh, external oppression. I would like to uh, also speak about the work of our press center, and uh, after five years of our activity, uh, Ukraine Crisis Media Center, when uh, we had anniversary, we had uh, a speech of a big patriot of uh, um, the country, Maria Ivanovich, and uh, she provided her speech at the fifth anniversary, and she named institutions and names. And we know that this was one of the moments, one of the Rubicons that was mentioned by Van Klimpus Chansazov, because we started to lose moral benefit to which we could appeal during the first years of transformation of Ukraine after the revolution of dignity and um, that we had in our uh, negotiations. As Vitaly Portikov mentioned, Ukraine appears when we uh, deal with our own fate. And recently we uh, had the difficulties on this, and it will be difficult for us uh, at the international arena. And uh, uh, 
this is Monocle Journal, and they have soft power index last year. Um, this was the edition of this year. Um, the countries that entered the rating of the most powerful brands, these were those countries that really fought to pandemic well. Uh, this is Germany, Denmark, uh, Japan. These countries were able to prove that they are um, uh, human-centered, that they place uh, people uh, as their top priority. And uh, they were able to deal with pandemic the best. It is difficult to provide good image if you are in turbulence or some inadequate actions are made. When we're speaking about international image, when we say why we do it for investment, for tourism, to increase capitalization of Ukrainian brands, and that they should be proud that they are Ukrainian, they should not hide it. And um, because um, I believe that Ukraine should be revealed on international radars. Uh, we should uh, uh, show that we have proper changes. And after the revolution of dignity, we implemented many changes. And also, we should become part of solution, not only the part of the problem. And uh, uh, for example, uh, for me, it is unspeakable to use, for example, Russian vaccine in our country. And there are other uh, issues. Ukraine should become more part of solution, not part of the problem. Otherwise, it won't be well perceived by international audience. A climate change issue is also of concern, and um, decarbonization should happen at, um, before 2040. This change should happen in Ukraine. And this would promote Ukraine as a country that really takes care of security and uh, environment and other things. And uh, it may speak at the same level with the top countries of the world. Also, the issues of pandemic, this is not the last one, and also R&D. If we do not have it, there should be proper protection of people inside the country in the framework of civilizational um, matters, as other countries do. Also, uh, there are different frameworks, and there should be proper surveillance. More solutions should be found that will be properly monitored by society. Um, Ukraine should search, uh, should search for solutions for each, for its re, re, uh, citizens, and uh, uh, UCMC may contribute to resolution of global things. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that uh, we need to remember that during the last years we were able to impact the perception of our identity. We do everything we, that we can, but this is not enough at the moment. And also, we influence through a hybrid warfare project and the survey how Russia systemically, through its TV channels, um, position uh, those values among their people. We carried out a lot of different uh, uh, educational visits for experts, ministry, ministry, uh, ministry officials, and also I spoke about it. Clubhouse. I uh, see that there is a level, different level of perception of Russian influence to, um, in some markets. For example, in the uh, British financial sector. 
and also there is uh, better understanding in Britain that uh, British financial system should not be a laundromat that provides financing to aggressive country that undermines democratic institutions. And this is another aspect of our influence. What we should do next, it is really important, and I would like to stress this. We need to support those players in Ukraine, such as the Ukrainian Institute, Ukrainian Cultural Fund. We should provide proper financing for them. It it goes from taxpayers, and this way Ukrainians invest in things they will, will be able to be proud of, to provide their identity, sustainability. That's why we should protect these teams of very talented people. I have an honor to be together with Vladimir Yermolenko and Marsha Palerova. We are in the supervisory board of the Ukrainian Institute, and these people work really hard. And uh, we continue at the level of civil society to deal with it. And these are unique cases when at the level of the state, we have really patriotic, qualified people. That's why this is a great priority. Moreover, this is also the formation of synergy. I see a lot of synergy between uh, 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 Ukrainian Institute and uh, Ukrainian um, civil society and projects that are created in Ukraine and other uh, initiatives and the project that appears today. Ukraine explained it is called. This is collaboration, communication, and we needed more between the Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Internews, Stop Fake. They all work in order to explain the depth of Ukraine, to explain our position and our attitude to people in this difficult pandemic and the more and more digitalized world. And I believe that this is an important mission of ours. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. We have uh, really important speakers. Tom, time flies really fast. And please be more concise. Nadia Kurochka. Who is, so to say, the ideologist or idea generator for many um, projects which were mentioned today? Uh, he is very creative, and uh, when we uh, developed some very creative projects. This was totally unexpected for many, many people. The president, the uh, minister of foreign affairs, the U.S. ambassador, they were very supportive to your creative ideas. I may recollect the publication of uh, that book about Ukrainian innovators uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, that book comprised uh, uh, interventions in the languages of those countries where those books uh, where the books uh, was published and uh, Gennady at that time uh, made much uh, Mm, uh, I may I may disclose the secret uh, that your idea mm, with the m m memorial presence to the U.S. president was implemented. Both uh, to both presidents. Uh, Valerie has uh, mentioned uh, that at that time. Ukrainian Crisis Media Center press room was uh, uh, defended by the self-defense troops. Uh, and I recollect there's a 
bullet holes in the windows uh, in uh, the Ukraina hotel and uh, it was between the second and the third floor and every day going up the staircase from the second to the third floor I saw that bullet holes and I uh, felt uh, my connection and felt the importance of my historic mission. I felt that it was that very place in the world where I had to be at that very moment. Mm, so, uh, uh, with the first person who had started uh, the protest in Maidan, we had launched a process which uh, uh, continues now the occupation of Crimea, Donbass, MH17, Syria, and now that process had reached the United States even, and uh, for me, uh, Ukraine is the place where that grail of freedom is being kept uh, uh, speaking in the language of the of Harry Potter actually we are defending freedom in Ukraine we do not need uh, the uh, support of the West uh, we in our support of freedom inside the Ukraine uh, uh, I had the the question what we need to do next we have to defend our freedom if we are successful in this defense of our liberties uh, we would uh, uh, see the flourishing uh, of arts and sciences uh, we would see the um, renaissance of uh, all creative forces which we have here in Ukraine let us look on Belarus. Uh, the IT sector uh, uh, remains important, and uh, uh, what was needed to the Belarusians to uh, build up their country? Uh, they needed free freedom, and uh, when they lost that possibility, they dispersed all around the world. Thank you for the uh, cool, um, the uh, 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 con concise uh, pres intervention. Uh, the grail of uh, freedom is a good expression. I think that it's a good, good uh, image. Uh, Vladimir Yermolenko remains connected with us via Zoom session and um, uh, referring to your extensive experience in urine use in Ukraine world, etc. I would like to ask, ask you what narratives should we present to Europe? Thank you, Valeria. I'm so happy to uh, stay in this uh, um, very dignified and respectful, respectful community. Natalia had referred to the project which has been launched today. I would like to reflect on some ideas which I have heard today. The idea of subjectivity, of uh, the idea of uh, Ukraine as a subject of international relations, not only in political aspect, but also in terms of uh, each citizen uh, of Ukraine. 
the Russian propaganda tries to convince us that we are a colony, that we are inexistent as an independent state. And of course, it is important to uh, uh, to prove that we are not a colony. But now I would like to play the uh, a role of a devil and uh, uh, suggest that subjectivity uh, perhaps is not the most important thing in this life. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, consoling to read uh, the books how Ukrainian migrants uh, 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 lived uh, in uh, Im immigration, uh, uh, for example, Volodymyr uh, Vinnychenko, uh, uh, who described his everyday life in exile in the Western country, or uh, uh, latest research about Pali Porlek and his uh, residence uh, uh, beyond Ukraine back in 18th century. Uh, um, uh, I'm a recall of the myths about Mazepa created by Byron or Prosper Merima, who used to call himself a Ukrainian Kazakh, but this would not help Ukraine if we uh, uh, are not perceiving ourselves as a part of Ukraine. I am not an expert in the diplomacy. We have very bright diplomatic figures around the table, like Mr. Chal and Mr. Lubkivsky, but today's world is very similar to the 18th uh, century world, uh, the world after huge civilizational wars. I believe that uh, uh, t the 21st century may become the world of wars, of everybody against the wars, and uh, the friendship between uh, uh, many allies. Uh, for example, um, Europe, uh, which uh, uh, is ready to uh, appease uh, uh, Russia um, under all circumstances, and the latest visit of uh, uh, Philip, Mr. Philip Borrell to Moscow had proved that, and uh, we have to appeal to the security interests of many countries. Of course, we may keep saying that we are the grail of um, freedom, and this is a huge uh, inherited uh, uh, narrative about that from Khvilovy uh, up to now. Now, but uh, besides uh, subjectivity that you mentioned, uh, together with uh, Peter Pomerantsev, uh, we uh, try to do some projects because, and we found out uh, that we are unable to. Uh, 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 to translate it, the uh, subjectivity, which uh, which is not understandable for our British um, audience, but uh, they suggested the uh, um, uh, agent uh, uh, the agency, uh, but. Actually, this does not reflect what we mean under the term, so-called term subjectivity. Uh, uh, moreover, the uh, uh, world of 21st century is more focused on the inter subjectivity, that it, uh, who is able not to be the subject uh, 
for itself but also to be the agent or subject for other nations uh, uh, we uh, for us this means that we should go beyond the borders and think how uh, how uh, we, c we can go to the world and ask how can I help you the world um, how can I help to America? How can I help to Poland? That is what we lack most. That's why I keep saying that uh, it is too late to communicate Ukraine in to the world just as Ukraine. We have to present some bigger frames and bigger uh, concepts. Uh, the biggest uh, frame which we do not perceive now is the uh, uh, Eastern Partnership. Ukraine has perceived Eastern Partnership as a humiliation, as a, a sort of uh, betrayal from the EU. Uh, historically, actually, this means that there is a big region and you may become a leader in that uh, region. Uh, I believe that we may speak on behalf of the region. This might be Eastern Partnership, the Black Sea region, Eastern Europe. Then there are big topics like disinformation, computer technologies, uh, some other um, crucial topics, and uh, uh, demonstrate what values we may offer to the world. And uh, I we want to, to respond to the topic raised by Danilo Lubkiewski about frontier line. Uh, Daniel, I believe that you underestimate the frontier line metaphor. There is nothing negative in it. This is an antithesis to the province uh, notion. Uh, the front line, frontier line, is in opposite to the province because the history is uh, taking its action at the frontier line, not in a province. That's why I don't believe that this is a humiliating um, for Ukraine. And as uh, a philosopher, I uh, would like to say that an important exists Potential uh, um, idea for us, uh, statement for us should not be how to become Sweden, Germany, or others, but to learn how to turn our weaknesses into our strengths. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, that you mentioned that discussion about frontier line because I uh, felt that uh, this could be an item for this uh, discussion. I uh, thank you for this opportunity to add. I just uh, want like to take a job a joke in the times of the Roman Empire. These were Goth, uh, Gothic tribes at the border who one time uh, who believed to be at the frontier line but at uh, some moment uh, they knocked at the gate and asked to take them to the um, as a part of the Roman Empire and uh, uh, the joke is as follows what the reason why should we because there are Hunnas uh, coming uh, to our borders we should not think in the categories of a frontier line, but in the categories of establishments. Uh, that subjectivity, which could not be translated, uh, 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 the word, the proper word is establishment, something which establishes. Um, uh, I fully support, nevertheless, the idea that you, uh, uh, that you mentioned Ukraine is too big to 
act in a small scale. Uh, we have to help our neighbors, Moldova, Georgia, um, Belarus, and they should be able to count for this uh, big uh, agent-like uh, support from Ukraine. Um, I uh, uh, may say that from the very beginning, try, uh, starting our informational work, we found a huge disinformation sources. Uh, uh, yeah, UCMC was established within 72 hours after annexation of Crimea. So the disinformation is a, a big, big part of our work. The hybrid threats group plays a very proactive role in it and unites many initiatives. We have Lubov Cebulska with us, who is a leader of this hybrid uh, threats group. Uh, and uh, the um, efforts of this uh, group are very positively assessed uh, 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 abroad. Uh, 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 currently now we are approaching to the external attacks on Ukraine and how we can counteract. Thank you for giving me the floor. Thank you for being with you today. Uh, today we have seven years anniversary. This is an important uh, date for our team and for me personally. When we only started, we remember what happened, what uh, people uh, told about us and how we were trying to communicate uh, counteract Russian narratives. Um, and I remember the situation. It was really different than we have today. Uh, when we said that Russia is an aggressor, some people say that we shouldn't um, use this word aggressor, maybe not uh, a war, but something else like conflict. And they try to show to us that is, this is something uh, really uh, domestic. And I had a group concerning hybrid um, threats. And uh, it is really interesting for me whether we bring this information properly to the world. The situation is really different right now. And this is not only our contribution. Um, uh, this collective and non-collective West, they went along their own way of understanding Russian threat concerning interference into elections, uh, uh, also referendums. And uh, uh, in Europe, they clearly understand that Russia is an aggressor. And there is a Sputnik promotion, Russian vaccine, also not streamed to and uh, also we see that uh, the perception of what we say now differs. Before they saw us like uh, um, half insane, and that was like a voice uh, uh, in the wilderness. And after elections in the USA, now we address it as to experts, and uh, our opinion is uh, valued. And uh, Natalia and Vladimir uh, said several words about our project, and I would like to announce it officially. This is a good cooperation of uh, several NGOs that is called um, Ukraine Explained, where we will not counteract uh, this information. Uh, what Russia says about that, but to tell about important events, figures, and uh, modern Ukraine and uh, in Ukrainian history. This is an important step for us because, first, this is the opportunity to speak with different audiences. And I would like to say that I often hear from foreign colleagues that we have powerful civil society, and we clearly understand that uh, um, strong civil society is needed not only during crisis, but in peaceful times as well. And Europe and other uh, nations, they go through this understanding because it was revealed that peaceful times uh, is not peaceful. And uh, 
countries may be under threat, uh, even though they have friendly relations with Russia or China. I would like to say several words about identity. I believe that when Russian Empire collapsed and Bolsheviks came to power, no one uh, called this country as post Tsar country. And for 30 years, we are called post Soviet people. Do we provide such identity to the world? Why can't we get rid of it? And uh, during several last weeks, I had international discussions. There were several Ukrainians, several representatives of our country. They mentioned the same words. They said, you know, we are post-Soviet nation. We have post-colonial mentality. And I believe that for us, it is really important to understand where we are, how we position ourselves as victims of genocide, of Kolodomor, uh, victims of Russian aggression, and where we should promote ourselves as powerful players. And we should show dignity. We should know not only put ash on our head, because no one wants to make friendship with the weak people. This is a simple issue of evolution. Everyone wants to be in the company of strong ones. That's why we should explain this identity, first of all, to our own citizens in order that they be our ambassadors uh, in the world. We should first explain to our domestic audience in order to convince the uh, others in the world. Thank you very much. And uh, a lot of projects were implemented by your group. And uh, please join our actions concerning counteraction to Russian information aggression. I would like to respond uh, concerning Holodomor and genocide. It may look like we are promoting victims uh, topic, but, but this is not about the victim. This is about Soviet identity and Ukrainian identity. When in US, uh, they wanted to at uh, the official level, they wanted to establish genocide as uh, uh, the uh, fact when everything, uh, uh, Holocaust was recognized, and with, this was not a simple task because it invoked many consequences. And uh, this was a huge task that we implemented in two years. We made it in the Congress, and now uh, the United States recognized Holodomor as a genocide. And uh, I thank all those who in US and Israel throughout the world, all those people uh, who joined uh, this. And uh, uh, when I was the deputy uh, minister of foreign affairs, I wanted to promote this topic concerning uh, Cuban genocide. They understood that this topic may be dangerous for them, and uh, 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 Russia published some books on this, and then Putin came to power, and new narrative was chosen. Stalin, uh, who died on the 5th, he became hero of Russia. and. Uh, we chose a different path. So identity is really important. We should speak about it. We have 15, we have 12 minutes. We have Alessandra and uh, Tatiana Ogarkova and Vitaly Portnikov will have two minutes at the end of our discussion. Please, uh, we give the floor to Tatiana. Daniel, Daniel, very shortly, please, what can you uh, add? Uh, I'm very happy to participate in this discussion and congratulate all of us for this seventh anniversary. I agree about the agent-like uh, uh, topic, the subjectivity. Mm -mm. <clears throat> but I would like to add a couple of things about which I haven't heard. When we mention Maidan, 
uh, as a crucial point when we became known abroad. For me, it is important that uh, since my Dan, at the moment of my Dan, uh, we became interesting to ourselves because bec uh, gaining importance uh, outside is uh, not possible without getting importance inside. And uh, oh, we felt a uh, huge interest and value in the eternal institutions and immediately after that moment uh, the uh, those initiatives that you mentioned even ukrainian institute started to appear and uh, unless uh, we become unable to feel this interest to ourselves um no, we uh, will be interesting to the surrounding world. Uh, another thing that uh, we have a uh, tendency, we tend to diminish our successes, our initiatives, uh, and our progress. Uh, uh, before our uh, meeting, I heard uh, from Volodymyr Kropyak, uh, and they made assumptions uh, what uh, uh, would uh, happen what uh, would happen even uh, to ukraine if maidan were to lose and uh, uh, and uh, this again brought me to the idea that we should realize our importance and when we want to be heard in the world we should clearly understand that uh, tra tragical or negative events are very mm, popular. Those projects uh, which uh, are implemented by Alessandra, by Luba, Cebulska, they, these are very important projects and an attempt to stay back from the media flow. And uh, quite often, uh, uh, our foreign colleagues try to contact us in case of negative events, events, not in case of positive events. That's why development of a long stories which are not connected with negative um, uh, hazardous events, um, this should become our priority, Pri uh, priority attention. Uh, and uh, the second, uh, sometimes uh, or we perceive that uh, uh, we may become interesting, becoming similar to other countries, but uh, I think that becoming interesting would depend on our ability to become distinct from them, to become special in something. Uh, Perhaps not to be very exotic, but uh, uh, ourselves, when we think about other countries, we uh, are interested in something which is different from us. We are uh, very different from Europe countries, we have different history, different perceptions, different uh, narratives, etc. And our relations with Russia, Luba is well, quite right, the, quite right that our evolution of our uh, relations uh, uh, had happened, uh, Russia had become uh, the aggressor, and for us, a great moment will come when that aggression will stop. Uh, and uh, some 20 years ago, uh, when we traveled abroad, we would hear uh, Ukraine, ah, it's next to Russia. Uh, uh, 
So now the first reaction to your, uh, the word Ukraine would be, uh, ah, uh, it's not Russia. We are uh, not simply just not Russia. We have to formulate good narratives, good stories, who we are. Today, there are many um, ideas about that new narrative. It's uh, not so easy to tell the story, which is uh, such diverse in geographical, in census point, uh, dimension, etc. But we are, uh, and we quite often try to put forward the ideological narrative. Perhaps the uh, uh, the story should be presented as a plural story uh, and uh, to uh, present ourselves not uh, uh, just as a country of war, uh, a country of embroidered shirt. We have to tell a, a plural, multiple story, diverse story. We, uh, it's not so easy to tell the story what Ukraine is today than it was some years ago. Uh, it's uh, 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 more difficult because this public communication is not uh, 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 well structured. That famous phrase, it does not matter. Um, it uh, 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 confuses uh, uh, many people inside and outside the country. Uh, uh, but uh, we understand that we will cooperate with all those people and move forward. Tatiana, thank you. You see, MC does much in uh, disseminating information in English, Spanish, French, uh, Italian, and other languages. Um, it's good to present Ukraine in plural way, but besides Ukraine is not Russia. Uh, uh, of course, and we have to decide how to present it. Alessandra has been dealing with this uh, issue for quite a long time now. What is your opinion it's it's uh, difficult to be the last in turn because much was already said but i will try nevertheless uh, uh much uh, uh many topics which were referred today they uh, reverberate in me and uh, uh, about those narratives that we have to uh, put uh, forward the counter to the Russian narratives. Uh, um, trying to understand what is perceived better. Uh, uh, the main uh, the main perception now is that Ukraine is not Russia, and this marker is true. Inside Ukraine, also we find out that uh, a counteraction to Russia inside Ukraine, all the uh, 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 demonstration that uh, Ukrainian culture is not Russian, uh, Ukrainian language is not Russian, Ukrainian events are not Russian, etc. Uh, this is uh, um, very uh, uh, peculiar feature and quite understandable that currently we're surviving through the era of uh, gaining national identity. I th perhaps this is uh, the main narrative that we should translate abroad. Um, uh, I fully agree that we have to find our unique voice to invent uh, uh, some positive affirmations, not just that Ukraine is not Russia, but what it is. 
And when we ask this question, we face many problems. Uh, we uh, 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 argue about the uh, famous uh, pol uh, uh, outstanding figures who might be interesting for the West. And here we have to go beyond the um, uh traditional topics as a post-colonial uh country we are very much limited uh, uh, when uh, our um, team gathers uh, uh, together every day we start discussions with the question why this or that event uh, might be interesting abroad and we come to question what we are ready to give even in the best days when it was quite clear what Ukraine can give, uh, Ukraine's uh, position always has been as follows. Uh, look at us, listen to us, look at our issues, our problems. Ukraine tries to attract attention, but doing that uh, is not a good basis, good uh, um, foundation for leadership. Uh, 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 gaining leadership is only possible when you offer something to the uh, bigger world, when you uh, uh, join global discussions. And this could be developed only gradually uh, and evolved with the time. We should strengthen relations with the world. This uh, the um, process of uh, uh, strengthening our, so to say, subjectivity for me is uh, uh, um, it's a question whether we will have enough stamina, enough energy. If uh, we manage to preserve this energy, we would be able to uh, to gain our uh, true independence and strengthen our uh, subjectivity. Uh, so finalizing, I would like to congratulate the UCMC with its anniversary. When it was founded, we all assumed that uh, it were for just for several months. Um, when uh, uh, during Maidan days we took initiative to uh, produce information in foreign languages, uh, we also expected that it would be it would finish very quickly. But uh, quite often uh, I hear in discussions that the public support, public uh, subjectivity is needed. But look, the UCMC has been in existence for seven years and uh, it uh, continues its uh, um, mission. Our initiative has been existent for seven years. Uh, but uh, some projects uh, founded by Ukrainian oligarchs, which came to its end, uh, there were some uh, uh, state uh, uh, public projects which were launched, uh, and uh, then they came to an end unexpectedly. But civil society, which is uh, diverse, which is uh, um, which manifests itself in many in many things. It uh, nevertheless continues to work, and this uh, gives uh, uh, us chance. Vitaly, Ukraine is not Russia. Ukraine is. I uh, uh, believe that we should learn how to look at uh, ourselves, not only with us, but with 
somebody else's eyes. Uh, we had wasted dozens of years to prove that we are not Russia. Our neighbors uh, um, uh, uh, do not think about that. Belarusians believe that they are almost Russia, while both Poles, the Poles and the Finnish uh, believe that they are, uh, have no doubts that they are not uh, Russia. When Ukrainians would become not the post-colonial but imperial na nation and uh, feel this uh, independence from e e e empire, uh, 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 you mentioned about uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, about what would happen in case of Maidan failed. I could say so tell to you that there would be the first year of presidency of uh, Zelensky. It might be the same, but without the war, and Zelensky would be supported by 84 percent of uh, voters, uh, including the and Luhansk. We have to develop quality. We have to gain our own voice and forget about Russia. These are the three tasks of a modern Ukrainian nation. Uh, if uh, at least one of those uh, uh, objectives would not be reached, uh, Ukraine would remain the anti anti-thesis of uh, Russian Maidan. So uh, we should work in this direction. I suggest a new slogan, Ukraine is not Australia. Uh, uh, thank you for all your ideas. My the very last word. Oh, we almost uh, complied with our time frames. I fully agree with uh, Alessandra. Uh, uh, that there are some initiatives which succeed and some initiatives which uh, uh, die. Uh, um, uh, the, the biggest value are people, are teams working on the initiatives. I spent uh, much time on Maidan long ago. I uh, was the ambassador abroad and uh, we're doing each job. We understand the importance uh, and also sustainability it depends uh, um, on uh, your readiness to continue uh, the uh, public support, unfortunately, is not uh, broadly spread in Ukraine. Some even ministerial uh, initiatives, they simply disappear at the moment when new people come. We uh, do not have this uh, um, corporate culture, so to say, of uh, uh, preserving uh, uh, good initiatives and uh, um, um, continue continuity in the initiatives. Although uh, we are now in the 30th year of our independence, uh, um, so this actually means that uh, uh, the sustainability is in people is in uh, institutional capacity of these people. I would like to thank to all the colleagues for your joint uh, uh, shared values. This joint shared values had been preserved from Maidan days. This has not changed since that days. As chairman of the board, I tried 
to do my best together with my colleagues, with members of the board, to find uh, resources for the UCMC work. And I would like to thank to those uh, who support us. Uh, we do not have uh, funding from oligarchs. We do not have, uh, we do not get funding from uh, the state. We exist on the account and with the support of uh, uh, philanthropists who believe that this sort of work is extremely important for Ukraine. And uh, by the moment we think it is important, we will do this. Uh, we will continue to inform you about casualties, about injured uh, military men, and uh, we would re, uh, uh, remind people that we are a great nation, that we uh, live in this country, and uh, that Ukraine, it is Ukraine, uh, we have great future in front of us. And oh, despite the fact that we reside in the midst of very tough times and uh, what we will leave uh, after us is uh, it would depend on our effort. Uh, and this today's team has to respond to the internal and external threats which we face today. Uh, perhaps this discussion will continue at uh, uh, subsequent levels. And uh, uh, thank you to all our friends uh, who came today. Mm. Uh, and uh, if in future you will become part of uh, uh, the public sector, will take important positions in the uh, in power. Please recollect today and uh, um, keep in mind. Uh, thank you to all the participants. I mean, Volodymyr Ivanov, Nadia, Danilo, Tetiana, Natalia, Vitali, Lubov, and others.